Welcome to the Queen of the Slav series. Today we're focusing on our favorite couple. Let's see what that dirty bastard Howard has to say on this matter. Donald Trump is on the phone. Oh, wow. I, my theory is that uh, Donald is really not running for president. You think he's just promoting a book? Yeah, he doesn't need the uh, commission. Donald. Hi, Howard. How are you? But I am having a good time. Mr. President. <laughs> Well, you have to endorse me, Howard. Yes, sure, I'll endorse you. What else have I got I to mean, do? I'll tell you what, this country won't be ripped off anymore, Howard. I know, you'll, you'll, you'll get a good deal. We'll get good deals. Well, the guy's a great businessman. Oh, yeah. You got lots me. of good deals and lots of lower taxes. Let me talk to that broad in your bed. Uh, I could almost have her talk to you. You could? Let me just she's say, out, actually, she's outside in another room listening to this. What is she doing, actually? What is she wearing? I what? don't know. Maybe I should get her in. Do you want me to get her in? Yeah, yeah, let me talk to her for a second. Oh. Let me talk to her. <laughs> What's her name again? Melanie? It begins with an M. Thing. Hello? Hey. Hi, how are you? You are so hot. Oh, thank you. I see pictures of you. I can't believe it. You're a dream. Oh. You are so hot. Are so you coming out with us? Yes, I am, baby. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I want you to put on your hottest outfit. Okay, no problem. What are you going to wear? Oh, I don't tell you now. You will see. Let me ask you this. What are you wearing right now? Uh, not much. Are you naked? <laughs> are you nude? <laughs> Almost. Oh. <laughs> Donald's girl. You gotta get your own girl. What if you, uh, what if you see me and you see how hot I am? Okay, let's see later. We'll find out, my Liebchen. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. So, what are you, uh, you're in love with Trump? Sorry? Are you in love with Trump? Yeah, we have a great time. You wanna marry him? Uh, I'm not answering that. You don't even care. Let's see, what? You don't even care. Why? You're perfect. And what do you do? You go over there every night and you guys have sex? That's true. Oh, we have a Every night you have sex? Mm hmm. Even more. Mm-hmm. You want? Yes. I could see you need love. <laughs> you can't trust anybody. You ever steal money from his wallet? <laughs> no, I never do that. Really? No. That's so silly. You're very beautiful. Understand. Very, very beautiful. Oh, uh, thank you. What do you do? Do you like to go to beaches? Uh, I do. I do. What do you wear on the beach? Um, actually, I like uh, just, you know, to take more private. Bikini on the beach, of course. Bikini or thong? Thong. Bikini, it's mean thong, you know. I, don't me, I always mispronounce it. I call it a thong. Lines on the body, it's not good. Yeah, the lines on the body. Mm-hmm. And you have a you, nice, right? and you have a big chest for a model. Sorry. You have a very nice chest for a model. You're not flat chested. Mm-hmm. Do you like a man with a very soft, dimpled uh, buttocks? That's me. <laughs> I have a lot of cellulite. <laughs> you don't have an ounce of cellulite, do you? you? Do. Yeah, I have a cellular. I, I admit it. Oh, okay. Some some chicks dig that. Uh-huh. They like a soft yeah, man. Yeah, some of them. Yeah, it's very, it's like, it's like. You like a soft, mushy man? <laughs> you, do you like a soft, unattractive man? Because that's me. Oh. I tell you, you are perfect. I tell you, I don't see a flaw on you. Mm. And you want to speak with Donald? Mm-hmm. Thank, you. Right, thank you. All right. All right. Take care. I love Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, man, she's naked there, isn't she? She is actually there. Oh, oh, what a life you have. Not having. so bad, Robin. This is a candidate. We're talking hey, hey, Donald. <laughs> That's right. Let me put You're you dealing on. now with a candidate, Howard. <laughs> Can you have him, Mr. Trump? Is this your average interview, Robin, for a presidential candidate? <laughs> Not for a politician. I no. would think You know what? Now. This is why you'd be a great candidate, because you're refreshingly honest. Clinton, could, believe me, Clinton's doing the same stuff. He's just not talking about it. He won't talk about it. No. You gave no. the greatest and, and quote. The level, the level of quality is not there either, Howard. Uh. I'm telling you, I was, yeah, I was. <laughs> and very seriously, Donald said, listen, I don't think America was shocked by the Monica Lewinsky thing. They were shocked by that he wasn't with a supermodel. Right. And he was with some big fat chick. Oh. And uh, even Donald couldn't believe it. Well, I did make the statement that there are those that say that if President Clinton was caught with a supermodel, he would have been everyone's hero. <laughs> <laughs> I would say a thing like that, but Somebody. there are those that say that. I believe you might have said it. Somebody oh. said that. Hey, Donald, listen, um, we're going to follow your candidacy. And uh, please come in and see us soon. Anytime you want, Howard. I'll see you soon. And if you want, call me seriously. About, I'm right. serious about that. And Robin, yes. keep up the good work. And you have yes. an open invitation on this show. You know that. I know that. All right. And He's, I appreciate Donald it. Donald Trump is a great friend of this show. And President Trump will be a reality. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Thank you, Mr. Bye. President. So long, Robin. Mr. President, go back to that girl. I will. All right. <laughs> so There's Mr. President, Donald Trump. And now for our idiot of the day. There is no doubt, as you've been saying over and over, Don, what Trump was saying here, and it clearly related to 
violence against Hillary. Dan, you're disagreeing with with uh, oil added CNN's token black guide on uh, lemon. Yeah. Don, I'm trying not to break down in laughter. This this conversation's almost broken into the comical realm. It, it's clear what he was suggesting. I mean, he, he clearly from what I had to read through his exact comments in The Washington Post today twice when I was asked to be on the show to try to find out what exactly the controversy was even about. Okay, let's play it again. Just in case you're not, sure. you're confused. Let's play it again. No, I'm not confused. Though. Okay, let's play it. Hillary wants to abolish, essentially abolish the Second Amendment. By the way, and if she gets to pick, if she gets to pick her judges, Nothing you can do, folks. Although the Second Amendment people, maybe there is, I don't know. But okay, ex explain to us people who don't understand and you, uh, that you want to laugh at what he meant by that. Uh, uh, Don, the man, I, I think we all know, is running for President of the United States. He probably has some data that one-issue voters, a lot of one-issue voters vote on the Second Amendment issue. It's clear he's trying to motivate people to go out and vote based on the potential for an open Supreme Court seat. How that's clear to you, that was some kind of call to an open revolution and to start firing your weapons at public officials is utter absurdity. No one said that. No one said that. No one said that. And so it, so no one said that. If he wanted people to go out and vote, why not just say, go out and vote, the Supreme Court depends on it, Listen, the Second Amendment depends Don, on it. Why give some, why, why say something like that if that's not what he meant? As the, someone who's running for leader of the Don, free world, shouldn't he be as clear in his words want, as possible? Go ahead. Don, do you want me to, I'll answer that question. Listen, we can disagree about how imprudent he worded that, but to suggest that he was calling to violence means to me that you came into this with the idea that Donald Trump was calling to violence. Let me make the case afterwards. You came into this with a clear and open mind. Listen, I was, I endorsed Cruz in the primary campaign. I'm not a Trump surrogate. I'm supporting him Dan, now. Dan, what you're saying right now makes no sense. I'm sitting at home. I'm watching Donald Trump. I, oh, yeah, I, I have two ears. You're, I have two ears and I have two eyes and I can see the reaction of the people right. behind me. And I, I'm not, we're you're, not stupid. Every single right. person you have on this panel no who are very smart stupid. people, Don, David Gergen, I who's respected. Hang on, can, will you let me finish, years. Dan? This David what, Gergen, well, who's no, respected you're, you're, by people you're, you're on both sides, by, re, by Republicans and by Democrats who've worked for Republicans and Democrats, who has worked for a president who's had an assassination attempt, who's lived Don, through presidents who's been assassinated, listen. knew <laughs> exactly what Donald Trump right. is saying, and we're supposed to be stupid enough not yeah, to understand I, that and sure to believe the spin coming from the surrogates and for people like you, you should be ashamed Don, of yourself. It doesn't make it, Don, I, I, frankly, I'm ashamed that, that you're talking to me as if I'm a child when 12 years of my life. No, you're a treating me as a child because you're telling me what I'm supposed you to hear. To you're TV and you're sitting here on television lying lecturing. to the American people. You don't know crap about this, Don. <laughs> I'm a secret service agent. Now cut off my mic. Do what you I'm want. I'm not going to cut off. You're, you're sitting Gergen. here and you're, you lying lying you're, you're, lying you're lying to the American people. You're lying to the American people and you know that you're lying to the American people. I'm lying. Dan Roger. Right. I read these comments. Done. I, a couple of people read them. Don, and can we just can nonsense? We, Don, can you're we go back to Jeffrey Tubin, please, Don, uh, and his point about uh, it, that ordinarily in this situation, a Secret Service agent would visit the campaign and talk to the candidate and warn him about the rhetoric like this. Jeffrey, can you jump in here and help us understand that and let he, Don respond to that right. question? Right. I, I mean, I, you know, I, I mean, I. Obviously, you know, Dan worked for the Secret Service, and I respect that. I, I worked with the Secret Service when I was an assistant U.S. attorney, when I was an advanced person uh, if, if working for a presidential candidate in 1980. I mean, I, 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 have, I certainly have less experience than, than Dan did, but I know how seriously the, FBI, uh, the, the Secret Service takes these issues, and they don't wait around to parse very carefully. Is it a threat? Is it not a threat? What does it really mean? They are aggressive about these issues and they reach out and they don't arrest people necessarily. When then, and there is no grounds, and let me be clear about this, there are no grounds to arrest Donald Trump for what he said. But it is close enough to the edge 
of a threat. And Dan, I really, I just think you're, you're way off base about this. Uh, I, no, I think any serious person who listens to this recognizes that there is, th this is close to a threat. Uh, and it's the kind of thing where the, where the Secret the Service says, hey, pal, take it easy. Yeah, it's, it's one of those no, things where everybody no else is crazy but the person who is wrong. But Dan, Dan, you're running for office in Florida. You're running for Congress. Yes. So do you support this kind of language? this kind of rhetoric coming from Donald Trump as, a, as someone who's what? running for elected office? Don, what kind of language? Trying to motivate Just Second Amendment Just answer the question. Do you support what Donald Trump said today? That was an answer to the question. Support yes or no? Do you people support, out to vote for Donald do Trump? Do you support what he said today? Don, people who believe Second Amendment should absolutely vote against the gun grabber, Hillary Clinton. One hundred <laughs> need to say within the realm of reason to motivate people to get out and vote. Yes, you should do that because you will lose First your First of all, Amendment that's a talking rights. point to call Hold someone on, a gun Bobby. grabber. No one is trying to take your guns. Right. That is a, a talking Don, point. You're Captain ahead. Talking Point. You <laughs> talking point, and then you throw it back at me. Your, your, your insults What's my talking point? Tell me okay. what my talking point is, Dan. You came into this and you said, listen, this is pretty clear. Donald Trump was implying some kind of a violent act against Mrs. Clinton, which I'm How is that a talking you from 12 years How of is that a talking point? Doing that. How is that a talking point? Into this do you know interview. what a talking point is? A talking point is when you are a political operative times. and you go on television right. every single day and you say the same thing over an and over and over, whether it's day. wrong or not. Because I've you have been fed something That's by funny, the campaign. I've never said this over and over. You're actually the first person to ask me about it. So I've never said this over and over. That's not a <laughs> question. I gave you an answer. It's clear to me. And, and Jeffrey, again, I appreciate your comments, but I disagree with you completely on this. When you take the totality of circumstances, the guy, it was not a guy in a bar making these comments. It was a presidential <laughs> candidate giving a speech where he was talking about the Second Amendment. <laughs> To the, the Secret Service would laugh this off if you brought this in their office. The Secret Service <laughs> Go ahead, David Gergen. Time yeah. Magazine has a piece out tonight interviewing former Secret Service high up. He said, I would be in there in an instant basically to tell the campaign to cool it. Uh, that this is very clear. This is very, uh, it, well, it's just like you. It's, it, it's someone who just, they went to interview and he said, you know, this is very close to the edge. The very words Jeffrey Tubin used. And so it, I, then it, right. you, I, I think you at least have to agree to the proposition that reasonable people can have a different interpretation of what he said, that it falls on different ears. You know, that's what a dog whistle is all about some people hear one thing some people right. hear another and and the, to after you've gone out and called her crooked for all this time basically called her a criminal ought to be in jail her your people are always yelling lock her up one of your people you know said yeah she ought to be shot for treason and you have the the, the well, my people uh, no no that, that's one of her one of trump's people one of his top supporters says she ought to be shot uh, for treason when well, you have that David, kind of I, rhetoric of violence what yeah. well, saying when you have a right. rhetoric of criminality and violence and then donald trump right, drops right. these but, words into the middle of it don't you think that some people could reasonably conclude from that wait a minute that really sounds like a, a sort of a you know a subtle call to violence in the event that you know because david don't you understand listen, that some people by the way dan there's a there's a there's a secret service official twitter account that says the secret service is aware of the comments made earlier this afternoon and as you said laughing it off they're not laughing at all they're not laughing that's it. exactly right Don, I actually talk to Secret Service agents who work on the job still. I work there for right, two years. Believe go ahead. me, they think this is ridiculous. No, I'm Wait, uh, what I was gonna, the point I was going to make is, David, I, I, agree, I see what you're saying, but the same standard of reasonableness as you're using that word does not seem to apply when it's Democrats. Not to get off topic here, but when Barack Obama compared Republicans literally to Iranian hardliners and terrorists, I didn't see anyone saying, oh my God, we should go after Republicans because they're all terrorists. Cause they're all terrorists. <laughs> so my point in this is if you come into this with a pre-existing narrative that Trump is calling for violence, you are naturally going to build the case ex post facto Don't and it think? doesn't you, work you, that way it's just democrats who are coming out saying he meant what he meant but jeffrey i'll give you the last word go ahead well it, it's it, it's just you know th this is a good example it's good it's it's on videotape because everybody can see it for themselves and everybody who understands the english language can make a judgment about what donald trump was was what was talking about and i i think most reasonable people will listen to what he said and be very disturbed. Hugh, lad, that was fun. Now let's see what our Slavic queen is up to now. I tell you what.
We need to build an economy and a future that every American can be proud of and be a part of. An economy that works for everyone, not just those at the top. That will be my mission as president. These are just some of the highlights of our plan. I hope you will go to my website, HillaryClinton.com, to read the details. Including how we are going to pay for everything I've proposed. And of course, I hope you will compare what I'm proposing to what my, my opponent oh, no. is talking about. Did Hillary just call Trump her husband? Now, here's one Does she have secret affections for Trump? Comparison. How will our favorite token Slovenian react? When you vote. We need to build an economy and a future that every American can be proud of and be a part of. An economy that works for everyone, not just those at the top. That will be my mission as president. These are just some of the highlights. Hillary back the fuck off by the goddess empress. Now let's look at things on a calmer note. That's right, Anderson. Uh, Mr. Trump, thank you very much. And thank Mrs. You. Trump, what would you think of the debate? I thought it was great. I think they did a very good job. And I thought it was very fair. I actually thought it was going to be tougher. I thought it would be more violent. But uh, it was good. I thought... I thought it would be more that. violent than it was? Well, I, I thought it was tough, but I didn't think, I thought it was going to be worse. Uh, a big moment was when uh, the moderators tried to get you to explain some sort of shifting of positions the way that they put it. Um, well, I think I explained it very well. And if you do you think that after this that the brand that you have of telling it like it is could be in jeopardy? No, I think I explained it very well. I, th I thought it was very easy to explain. And, According to every single poll, I won the debate by a lot. Uh, I'm in the 70s, which is a lot when you have four people on a stage. So uh, I think I, uh, yeah, I think it was a really successful debate. No, I think I answered that very well, actually. On the issue of immigration and the question of what you did or didn't tell the New York Times, aside from that specifically, just big picture, you did say that you could be and would be flexible because that's what leaders need to do. You How flex be flexible with everything? You can't just say this is it and you're never going to talk. You never. You have to be flexible, and I explained that I think very well tonight. You have to be flexible. You have to have a certain flexibility, Dan. And if you don't, uh, it's uh, it's going to be a problem. Uh, and, can you, you, know, you can you tell people, me where you'll be flexible? Over my life, I've known people that are totally inflexible. They go nowhere. You have to have now. With that being said, you want to make great deals, not average deals, or not in, meet in the middle. You want to make great deals, but. Uh, there's nothing wrong with having some flexibility on some things. How and what part of your immigration plan do you think you would be flexible? To say, uh, frankly, right now I'm very satisfied with what I have. That doesn't mean I wouldn't take it different. I might make it tougher. I mean, to be honest with you, it could be tougher. It's pretty tough, but I might even make it tougher. That's like the wall, for example, non-negotiable. Happen. The wall is going to happen, and Mexico is going to pay for the wall. And just like you're standing there, you can bank on it. Um, I can't believe I'm going to ask you this question, but do you realize that you're probably the first person in American history, maybe even world history, to make a joke about your, you know what, on a debate stage? No, I only made a joke about my hands. I have very powerful hands. <laughs> yeah, you went a little further than Look that. Look at these hands. Aren't they beautiful? I have very powerful hands and large hands, relatively large hands. And a politician uh, was said I didn't have large hands. It's the first time anyone's ever said that one. Uh, so, no, I, I think it was a very, I think it was a good moment. Mrs. Trump, what did you think of that moment? <laughs> <laughs> it was a great moment, okay? <laughs> no, it was, it was fine, you know, he was wow. attacked and uh, Marco Rubio attacked him and uh, he responded. Um, Mr. Trump said earlier today in Maine, I believe, that uh, before he went on stage that you said to him, can you please ask, act presidential like you did in Mar-a-Lago? What, what did you mean by that? Just to be presidential, in one way to be, um, in one way himself, but uh, to use the right language, and he did it. He was great. Mr. Trump, what, were you, what was going this through your... This is a little different when you're being attacked from five different angles by many different people, especially when we had 17 people. Uh, but I thought, actually, tonight I was really happy with the result. I'm very happy with all of the online polls because I think they're the highest numbers I've had so far. What was going through your mind when Ted Cruz said more than once that you should breathe? Uh, nothing. I didn't even know if he said that. I mean, did he say that? I mean, yes. I, I really don't know. Uh, I don't think Ted had a very good night, but I think that 
and I think we did have a very good night. But I found it to be very interesting. I did not find it to be as tough as I thought. Uh, one more question about, Trump, about Mitt Romney. Mr. Trump, can I just ask you one more question about Mitt Romney? You were very clear in saying that you opposed uh, him personally and politically and so on and so forth. But what about the concept of him saying that people should vote for anybody but you? It seems as though he wants to take it all, all the way to the convention. He failed candidate. He failed horribly. It's an election that he should have won. Uh, he choked. I mean, it's pure and simple. I, and when a person chokes, once they choke, they always choke. Marco choked. That means he's going to choke. When Chris Christie was uh, grilling him, it was a total choke. When uh, Mitt Romney uh, got, I don't know what happened, he got the nomination and he just choked like a dog. And he knows I know that. And I said it to him very loud and clear. I was very unhappy. I spent a lot of time with him. I spent a lot of money on him and a lot of effort. And he went away for like the month prior. You, you, he wasn't anywhere. Nobody could find him. And the last person we need running is Mitt Romney. So he knows, he knows how I feel about it. And obviously he's not too happy. One last question. If for some reason you don't get the magic number delegates, you need 1,237 before the convention, do you feel confident that if there is a contested convention, you'll be the victor? No, I don't feel confident, but I think there's certainly a good chance. I will certainly have the most delegates by far. I already do. I'm way in the front, and uh, I, I think I'm going to have a very good Saturday, and we're going to have a very good Tuesday. We'll see what happens. And I certainly had the best Super Tuesday before. I, you know, and I think even you would admit that, right? You had a very good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Oh no, watch out, pants.